Hi folks, it's Switchback. Let's talk today about what to do if you are caught in a thunderstorm. Prevention is of course number one. If there are thunderstorms in the forecast, if it's possible, delay, postpone, readjust your trip one way or another to try to avoid those thunderstorms. However, this isn't always possible and sometimes they can sneak up on you. The weather in the mountains here, totally unpredictable sometimes. So, it's important to be prepared. Some parts of the year, certain areas will get lightning almost every day. Most of that lightning will happen in the afternoons, and so if you're able to do most of your hiking in the mornings, that will help some. Keep an eye on the weather reports. Mountain-forecast.com is one of my personal favorites, but I have several different websites that I will link down in the description below that I tend to use for weather reports and my Garmin inReach can also get up-to-date weather reports. Know your exit points, and that includes the areas surrounding the planned areas that you're gonna be in. So like if you're doing a long hike of the PCT, the weather's really bad and you need to get out, make sure that your map is not just of the PCT, that you can look at the areas that are around. When I go on a backpacking trip, if I'm looking, so for example, Desolation Wilderness, you know I love Desolation Wilderness, is directly behind me. And when I go on a trip there, I make sure that I know, okay, if I have to bail from here, this is an exit point. Worst comes to worst, I have to hitchhike back to my car. Because lightning by itself isn't necessarily the only risk that comes with lightning, but we'll get into that in a moment. So let's say that you're out backpacking and you're not quite yet to your campsite and you can kind of see that the weather is starting to turn and you can hear thunder out in the distance you are now at risk. Even if the sky is blue, it is time to take action. Lightning can strike up to 10 miles away from a thunderstorm. So even if the sky is blue above you, if you're within earshot of that thunder, you are within lightning striking distance. Most of us have seen the diagram of what to do in a thunderstorm and the crouch position and plugging your ears to protect your eardrums which is great in a pinch. It is not a way to ride out an entire thunderstorm. If you can maintain that position, I'm impressed. <laughs> Especially since you're supposed to stay protected for at least 30 minutes after the last of the thunder and lightning. But if you feel the hair on your head, arms, legs, starting to tingle or stand on end, you're in a very high frequency danger zone of electricity and you need to move fast. That is more important than getting into that crouch position. You might even hear your electronics starting to get staticky. I'm gonna go into some strategies of how to avoid high risk areas like that, but if you are in a higher risk area, get to a lower risk one if you possibly can, spread out from your group, and then assume the crouch position, only after moving to a safer area. If you have a sneaking suspicion that a storm is starting to roll in, even if you can't hear thunder yet, but you start seeing some dark clouds rolling in, get to lower ground. Avoid ridge lines, high peaks, high points, isolated trees and meadows with just, just big wide open spaces. You don't wanna be the tallest thing around. Try to get below tree line if you're not there already. Try to look for a, sm a grouping of trees of similar height or a grouping of smaller trees among larger trees for some shelter. Get out of any bodies of water, including puddles. Avoid laying flat on the ground. You really want as little contact with the ground as possible. If you have a foam pad, there is evidence that it can minimize your risk of impact. If you are struck, but don't let water puddle at your feet. And I've seen anecdotal evidence that an air pad can protect you the same way, but I haven't seen anything that's actual hard evidence that this is true. Avoid any metals, including your tent poles, trekking poles, ice axes, climbing gear, grommets on a tent or tarp, zippers, your pack, which may have a metal frame and metal zippers, backpacking chairs, your pocket knife, fishing poles, fencing, even your cell phone. Most resources say to avoid staying inside of your tent because the metal poles can attract that lightning. A few places say to stay inside, not as many as say to stay outside. Ultimately, a tent's not gonna protect you, it's just gonna keep you dry from the rain, but that's a lower risk than the lightning. Avoid buildings with exposed sides to it, like a picnic pavilion or a camping shelter. Shallow caves, old mines with metallics, or even large boulders can be a deadly place to be in 
in a thunderstorm. If you're in a group, spread out about 15 to 20 feet apart, and then that way, if someone is struck, it's limited to the one person, and someone else can attend to them, potentially including administering CPR. You will not get electrocuted touching someone or helping someone who has just been struck by lightning. And about 80% of lightning strike victims survive. If there are multiple victims, attend to the ones who appear to be dead first, potentially, again, administering CPR. Treat any burns the same way that you would treat any burn. This is where taking a wilderness first aid class can be really helpful. And again, stay in your safe space for at least 30 minutes after the last lightning or thunder. A nice bonus tip that I heard is to wear earplugs when a lightning and thunderstorm is hitting because it can protect your eardrums as in the event that there is a close strike. Plus, most of us carry them backpacking and they take up zero space and they weigh nothing. When you're setting up your tent, try to avoid, again, high ridge lines, anywhere that water can pool. You may even want to be on a slight slant if you're suspecting that there may be rain and lightning. And I have a whole video up here about how to choose a good campsite. If someone in your group is struck, you're going to need to alert search and rescue as soon as possible. A personal locator beacon or satellite messenger can be the fastest way to get this done. I have a video here comparing the options that Garmin offers and another video here explaining why you would want to carry one. I hope that this has been helpful for you and I hope that you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up down below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Events? Uh.